Hi everyone, so the shirt's finished. If you want to skip and go straight to the end product, then the time's in this corner here. Uh, the original idea was to make an earlier version because of the colour scheme, which is what this build was all about really, seeing the Chinook uh, in this scale, in that colour scheme. But as I um, found more and more photographs, I ended up getting two really good photographs, both the number 7 squadron, uh, ZA680 and ZA682. Now there were the late Chinooks because of all the gobbins stuck on the side, but I thought, well, it'll add a bit of interest anyway. So while not the most definitive RAF model Chinook, I do hope it gives a good impression. I do hope you like the end results. Um, I want to thank everybody for your comments. Uh, they're all taken on board. I do hope to see you for the uh, next video, whenever and whatever that will be. So thanks for watching and uh, see you later. Now I'm going to try and tackle um, putting this drive shaft fairing on this intake screen. On a dry fit it worked. There we are. It's, it's a bit of a tight fit, but it's uh, gone through. I'll get on with the other one. So I'm going to assemble all these parts and attach them to the shinner, which is over there. But before I did that, I did a quick dry fit. Now, one golden rule that I always ignore and it always trips me up is that you should dry fit assemblies like this before you add paint. It's a golden rule. Dry fit, make sure it fits all together and then add paint. I didn't do that. So when I'm dry fitting this all painted up, I found that uh, they didn't seat properly around here and that engine hole to this part here. It didn't quite seat. So after a lot of head scratching, I eventually took this off, took it out and took quite a bit of paint off with it while doing it. But what I found out is that the cross section of the uh, engine mesh, the part has a pin that holds the two parts together. So when I'm fitting this part in, this area here should fit as snug as possible against this part. Now with that pin housing there, it wasn't seating properly. So what I did was, because I couldn't get at this to cut it and clean it, and I didn't want to weaken this structure anymore, I just took about a millimeter off this part here. Fitted it back in. I don't know whether you can see where I've cropped and cut that part, that hole there. So now everything fits wonderfully. Just got the exhaust to do, but they can fit in whenever I wish. So that's all the engine assemblies and what have you all assembled both sides. Uh, just a bit of touch up of paint here and there on the joins. Um, as I said, the exhaust will just fit on when and if I decide. Uh, even though they're shiny in real life, it doesn't seem to scale down right, so I'll have to knock that sheen off. Do that later. 
I built a jig and a foam board. And the reason why is because I've started to assemble the uh, landing gear. And I'm just worried that I've had so many issues with it that uh, it may be very weak, not take the weight of all this plastic, especially when you get the blades on. This one fitted um, beautifully, no problem. In fact, it's just a dry fit. That's how good a fit it is. This, on the other hand, I had all sorts of issues, which is why I didn't video it. I don't know whether you can see, there's a break there on the strut. You see that like white line? That's the break. It just broke off. So I've added some super glue. Well, that one went in easy. Next, I shall get on with the the ramp door, applying that and the struts. I've painted a couple of bits of plastic rod. I think it's a 0.5 diameter. Painted them Vallejo uh, aluminium. I shall dry fit them into the holes already there in the kit. Offer it up to the body, get the angles and dangles right. And once I'm happy, I shall set the end of this actuator arm uh, with glue. I'm not worried about this taking uh, any weight or it doesn't have to be strong because the bond will be with these four tabs here. So the ramp's all on. I had to put the Chinook on its landing gear just to make sure I got the ramp door touching the floor. I wasn't too happy about doing that but I needed to do that. I've put the Chinook on its side to add all the hooks, there's three of them. These loop aerials are a bit dubious. A couple of reasons, one, I'm not too sure about whether it should be just one or two. For the location I used uh, uh, FX instructions, 172 scale Chinook, number 18 squadron. They had them very close to this uh, hook area, which seems odd to me, but I'm trusting that uh, they were right. The other hook, the light and the aerials at the front there. So I'm going to let all that set. Then I'm going to turn it round and add all the bump on the top. So I don't know whether you can see that the uh, the wires being added, the chaff boxes. So now I'm going to add the uh, nose aerials. So before I get to the uh, blades, I'm just going to quickly run through the whole Chinook Fuse Large issues, what I have done, what I haven't done. On the photographs, they've got some brackets around here, just below the exhaust on either side. They should have been added to the Chinook. Uh, these vents are wrong. They're not right, so don't take these as gospel. Uh, the sandwich box, I'm not 100% sure you get them on both sides. Uh, chaff box is added, the aerial. These are far too long, by the way. I should have trimmed them down. It would have been an easy fix, but I didn't realize until I added them um, how long they were. They were a good four mil too long, maybe even more, which is a shame. Uh, there's a big aerial. I've actually drilled a hole for it that uh, sits on top here. It's almost like a T-shaped aerial, but I'm not too sure what it looks like on the top. So I've left that off. I'm so glad I've made this jig. Uh, the original purpose was just to keep the weight off the undercarriage, but it's been great for all sorts of things. Uh, the door, around here, there's three sockets. Uh, I've missed that off. And I think, I think that's it. That I can spot. So I'll show you the blades now. 
So now the paint on these blades is dried thoroughly. I've got the well-worn bit of sandpaper. I'm just going to sand both sides, just very lightly. Just do the underneath first. So I'm just going to take that roughness off the top first. Being careful not to burn through on the uh, edges here, which is quite easily done. So that should have got rid of the bulk of the any crap on the surface of that blade now, i.e. dry paint and bits of dust. Now I'm just going to go into a uh, direction of flight and just gently work my way up and down and hopefully I'll burn through and the colour underneath that I've laid or the other colours, there's two of them, there's one on the leading edge and one on the top here, will burn through and hopefully give us a, a reasonable effect of uh, well-worn blades. And as I said, I need to be checking quite frequently. And I just need to let the surface dry and see what I've got. And this will take a bit of time. I don't know whether you can see that. You see it's starting to burn through. I'm not going to go overboard, I think that's more than enough. It will look uh, even more dried. I do notice that the edges on the blades on the shunks are quite well chipped, but I think for model purposes, I need to keep it as subtle as possible. It needs to be noticeable that it's there, but not too much. So I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to just uh, come back later and have a look at it before I do all the other blades in the same way. So I may change my mind when I come back in a few hours once this is dry. A bit too sheeny, I think it should be a lot more matte than that. But hopefully you uh, can see. I'm gonna give these uh, a clean with some light fluid. Just get rid of all the residue. If I wasn't happy with these, uh, one golden rule, if you're painting your blades a certain color, they should never be pure black never be pure black. I've got the mixed colour here so if I'm unhappy with this I can always go over the top with it again and start again either with the same method or perhaps another idea. So once I've cleaned these with light fluid I'm just gonna spray some matte on the ends here they should be matte there shouldn't be a sheen on them uh, maybe a sheen on the central areas but as you work down it should be a, a matte colour really. So I'll give these a clean and get on with the other blades. So that's the blades done now. I've just added a bit of uh, matte varnish at the end here and then fade it off. The hub. So all I'll do is I'll change the pitch of these blades once this is seated on the actual shinner and hopefully it'll give a good impression. Um, I don't know whether this is front or rear actually. Um, so I think that's better than the what the kit had to offer. I can adjust those blades, like I said they're not glued in, they are movable. So it just gives a better a better look I think. I hope. So hopefully the next thing you'll see are some final photographs.